Great to see you all here. I'm Neil Benezra, director of SFMOMA, and it is a profound pleasure to welcome you all to this groundbreaking uh, this morning. We're thrilled that you could join us. This is a defining moment in our history, and it is great to have you with us. Uh, I, I have to say before I begin that the first person who arrived this morning for the groundbreaking was one of our trustees, Brooks Walker. And Brooks' uh, arrival reminded me that 20 years ago, almost exactly, this museum held another groundbreaking on exactly this site. Uh, and here we are now, 20 years later, and we are expanding upon that, that, that remarkable step that the museum took in 1995. Um, we moved here from, to Third Street from the, uh, our Van Ness location, from the City Hall location, and we were immediately pioneers in this neighborhood. Obviously, the South of Market neighborhood was not what it is today, and very quickly, pioneers became anchors. SF Moba quickly became an indispensable gathering place for anyone interested in the visual arts who was a resident of San Francisco, lived in the Bay Area, or anyone who came here. And over the course of the last 18 years, since 1995, SF MoMA has grown, I can only say exponentially, in terms of our programs, our membership, our attendance, our collections, family visits, everything has doubled or tripled in scale and size. Uh, and, and our exhibitions, I, I, I have to say, reflect the diversity and the range and the creativity of this community, and they very regularly travel around the world, quite literally. So today, in, here we are in 2013, and we're on the cusp of another remarkable change. When our expansion is complete, contemporary art will again become, not that it hasn't been, but will become even more uh, fundamental uh, as a component of the cultural life and the public and civic life of San Francisco. Our building will more than double our current gallery space. We will offer many extraordinary art-filled, uh, but also free to the public spaces and galleries for art, many versatile spaces for live and performance art, uh, and large-scale installations, and a building that will feel open and uh, is integrated into the urban, uh, urban fabric of the south of, uh, south of Market and South of Mission neighborhood as it possibly can. And we'll also offer dramatically expanded education programs for school children. And I want to pause just for a second on that because this is a very important point. Earlier this month, our board announced that we have the intention, and I think we will accomplish that intention, not, it's not just aspirational, that we'll create a $10 million endowment specifically to support free admission for anyone under the age of 18 to come to the museum. We, we could not be more excited and inspired by this. Now, if there's one question that I receive uh, pre pretty much on a daily basis, and certainly a question I receive more than any other question that I'm asked, it's this. Gosh, two years of construction. SF MoMA is going to be closed at Third Street. Where will SF MoMA go? How will our community continue to experience contemporary art in the way that we have for the last 18 years here on Third Street? And I'm here to tell you, and I mean this very, very seriously, that SF MoMA will be quite literally and figuratively on the go. You, I think, will have noticed in the paper, and if you've been out to Chrissy Field, the remarkable exhibition that we've been able, been able to mar, uh, mount on Chrissy Field of sculptures by Mark DeSuvero. And just in a few weeks, in, in June, we'll be opening our first, the first of many partnership exhibitions with the Contemporary Jewish Museum, which is, of course, just around the corner from SF MoMA. I, I dare say, I dare say that the period of time that we're entering into here, the next couple of years, culminating with the opening of the building in early 2016, will be the most exhilarating and exciting in the history, in the entire history of this museum. I couldn't be more excited about this, and I think our board and our staff and our whole community shares that great, that great excitement. At the forefront of all this work, and, and, and the, we could not have asked for a better leader at this time, is Chuck Schwab, our board chair, and I'd like to pass the word now to Chuck. Well, good afternoon, or good morning, everyone. What an incredible pleasure for me to be here to see this modern art building over here. We're going to surround that with a, a little bit of a, a veil, and that'll be a permanent structure right there. <laughs> so we always want to take new ideas in, don't we? But uh, it is really a thrill for me to be here for this groundbreaking. It is a uh, it was a twinkle in many of our eyes, I think, uh, a few years back, and to uh, have this moment come, boy, now we've got to build something, Neil. It's uh, for sure. We can't leave this hole here that we would be embarrassed, to say the least. It always seems to be, and 
we, we all, I think, love living here in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Uh, because we always seem to be way ahead in so many ways and so many different things, whether it's business or art or technology or progressive social movements, for sure, originate in San Francisco. And it's a great place to have, I think, leadership about where we're going as a civilization in the future. And this museum here, I think, in many ways expresses that and lives with it and, and, and offers it to all of our members and our public. Uh, so SFMOMA has always been at the forefront, I think, of so many different movements. Ahead of its time, the new works that we've done, the new ideas and different ways of looking and seeing things, that's what this whole institution is about. And this will be, we'll be doubling that capability. So it'll be more and more fun, I think, for families and kids and so forth to come here and to be a part of that. I'm really thrilled to have that happen. But I want to also thank the leadership of the museum. It's been that twinkle in our eye was something in 2009. And um, it, it just took a lot of asking people to help out with this. But there was a certain person in my life, Don Fisher, who we were very close, Don and Doris, and Don sort of put the challenge up to me, said, you know, we could really do something fantastic for this city if we all sort of got together. And I said, Don, in his final hours, I said, Don, you, you've got the guy here who's going to make this challenge a reality. And that's really what we've got going on here. And so thanks to Don and Doris, you guys really made this challenge. So I have to thank also the community itself, our council people, supervisors, our mayor, our chief of police, the chief of the fire department. Just look at his fire department now. Well, he has a brand new one just a couple blocks over there, so he's really happy and his whole team is really happy. So he's here today with us also. But uh, our trustees, thank you for all your participation. It's been fantastic. Uh, I, I just can't uh, thank enough of the people here who have been here working hard with me side by side. And another fellow who I want to introduce, uh, our mayor, Edwin Lee, is a fantastic guy. He is what this city has always needs to have, a guy who is just going to make things happen. Not a lot of fanfare, but you just see how this whole city is sort of coming to life. It's going to be probably in 2000 and whatever, 16, we got football coming, we've got museums coming. It's unbelievable, Ed. Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you, Chuck. And I was just about to uh, recommend, uh, Chuck, that you and I and Charlotte Schultz uh, buy some shoe polish, and maybe in a couple of years we'll put that on and pose as 18-year-olds. <laughs> then we can maybe look a little bit like Supervisor Kim and get in for free. How about that? Uh, this is an incredible time. Uh, Chuck, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I'll be very brief uh, because what I really feel today on, on this particular groundbreaking, it's, it's uh, a lot of sweat, a lot of good hard work from Chuck, from the board of directors, from Robert and Randy Fisher. I want to thank you for your wonderful leadership. Uh, you had to raise an incredible amount of money for this to happen. Uh, but it was for a great cause. And uh, I go back and, and uh, to our first uh, luncheon, Chuck, that we had where uh, you explained a little bit about your history to me and I did for you. And uh, we both uh, talked about uh, some old friendships that we had and you expressed uh, your friendship with Don uh, back and that this was partly in honor of that. Well, I want to also express uh, the city's official thank you to Doris and to Don and the Fisher Collection, the Fisher family, for your wonderful uh, contribution to our city. Um, and uh, it is with that recognition that we do this groundbreaking, plus a big, huge thanks for a new fire station as well. Uh, but uh, as I will look forward to speaking to the graduating class at Lowell High School this afternoon, I'm gonna talk about this because it's part of what we do in San Francisco. 
It is for our youth, but it is also future looking. It is about what we all do for our great city. And that's what I feel about the Fisher family, what you've contributed to our city. You know, culturally based tourism is now at about $2 billion of income for the city. It employs almost 20,000 people. And this is what our city does. It celebrates culture. Uh, this is what draws so many people to this. And now I think Supervisor Kim is so proud of these institutions that are coming into her district uh, that she and I have joined in so many groundbreakings. But we celebrate this with a very serious recognition of the people that have done this for us. And so on behalf of the city and county, uh, with all of our hearts of uh, gratitude, I want to thank uh, uh, Robert and Randy, I want to thank Doris, I want to thank Don Fisher, the whole Fisher family for their great, great contributions to our city. This is a gift that we'll keep on giving and with this announcement for the youth to come in for free with a $10 million endowment, $5 million of which is already anonymous. I love anonymous gifts. <laughs> uh, one of these days I'll try to do that myself. Uh, but uh, this is an incredible time for our city, uh, but it's one that I think this is another example why we take the opportunity to celebrate and to thank the people who have led this effort to do so and to just have everyone appreciate. Uh, life in San Francisco is very special and this is one of the reasons why. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Lee. I, I would just like to second Chuck's remarks earlier that the, the support that we receive from the city, from the mayor on down, has been nothing short of extraordinary. I have to say it's probably unprecedented in the history of San Francisco that we've had universal, unanimous support from the city. And there's, through all of our permitting processes and everything that we've asked for, it, it's all happened. And it's, just, it's, it's a credit to you and your, your amazing team. You know, about, about three years ago, we formed, uh, Chuck and I together formed a committee of our board and staff uh, to uh, search for an architect for this expansion. And we, what we were looking for was an architectural firm that in, through their work and through their attitude toward their work and to, through their, uh, their resume of experience would express the, the values that this museum holds and that we really want to express going forward. Values of openness and generosity and sharing and welcome and transparency. And we also wanted to have a great building, obviously, that would, that would uh, show all of our collections off to the best possible advantage in great public spaces. And we, we mounted a, a really wonderful, really exciting search. And on the last day of our last uh, tour of duty, traveling around, looking at, looking at buildings and visiting offices, we were in Oslo, and we met with Craig Dykers and his partner uh, at Snowheda, Chittle Thorson. And at the end of that day, we knew, and there was, we knew in no uncertain terms that this was the firm that we wanted to work with. And I can only say, as I welcome Craig up to the, to the, uh, to the podium, that it, the last two, three years have been nothing short of extraordinary for Ruth Burson and myself and our, and our entire staff in working with the Snowheaded team. They are incredibly talented. They are great listeners. They're marvelous architects. And I think they're going to give us a world-class building for San Francisco. So Craig, please. Thank you. Once again, it's an honor uh, to be here today uh, speaking to all of you. Uh, many people ask me what it's like uh, to make a work of architecture, to design or make a building. And uh, many people describe the act, I suppose, as being similar to giving birth. Uh, I think that's an apt description, depending on where you start in the process. There is the uh, initial discussion of feasibility. Can we do this? Should we do this? <laughs> and that discussion could go fast or slow. Uh, but this can happen with some thought, and it usually does. This is followed by a creative phase. The creative phase is really the fun part. Uh, then there's the careful task of nursing the development along. And suddenly, we discover the pain of giving birth. Somehow, this is akin to constructing a building with steel and stone, except that the nine months uh, that is used uh, to deliver uh, this child and the intense labor that follows is stretched into 20 or 24 months in this case. Happily, at the end of this, there's the miracle of birth when the doors open and there are hopefully plenty of smiles and hugs while our guests enter the new 
SF MoMA. After this great day, the building will mature slowly at first, and it will certainly experience many challenges in its life alongside the days of joy and celebration. While this metaphor is pretty good, there's an important difference that I'd like to point out. Unlike many marriages and many births, the making of a building is not a monogamous relationship. It's perhaps better seen as a polyamorous relationship because there's a great deal of partners in this effort, and we all know how sticky that can be. <laughs> there are numerous partners to consider along the way, uh, and each of these partners has a wedding ring, so to speak, and I've got the privilege of representing this group of lovers here at the podium today. The ar architects often receive uh, a great deal of, uh, of uh, attention, uh, and that is important, but uh, it's also a tremendously large team that we represent. So I wanted to share with you rather quickly the names of our partners in this polyamorous relationship. It's a wonderfully rich list representing groups from California, the United States, and interests abroad. And so here it goes in alphabetical order. We're gonna start with AFP. Sounds innocuous enough, but they're actually installing the sprinklers that are gonna make this building safe in the future. Arup Engineers is working with the acoustics, the AV, the facades, and the lighting. There's Atelier 10, CMI, CSI Calkins, Cupertino, our friends Don and Terry Young, who are the managers who keep this ball round and keep it rolling. There's Edget Williams Consulting Group, our fantastic partners here, EHDD, they're our partner architects, and some of them are here, Duncan and Kelly and Lada in the audience today, great partners to work with. And Close, who are working with facades, Habitat Horticulture, Hyphen A Design Lab, who work with the Green Wall, JMW McClanahan, KPFF, Chrysler, Local Projects, MKA Engineers, McGinnis and Chen Associates, Sam Anderson Architects, we're here too, Snohetta, and some of us are here today, my great partners and team members, uh, some of you may have met, SOM Graphic Design, Taylor Engineering Enterprise, TCOM, and I suppose the winner of the most apt name in this group of consultants is the Fire Consultants. Can anybody guess what job they have? Uh, there's Turk Technologies, and finally our friends at WebCore, who are building this project, the general contractors of this team. And this is just a partial list to give you some idea of the complexity that this project represents and the enormous amount of teamwork that goes into making it. All of these people are working together in an intense symphony that are gonna create a museum for modern art that will be without equal. Its collection is exceptional, its mission is generous and provocative, and it is a gift for the youth of our future. Its walls will signal a new direction for how we as the, the audience interacts with great works of art and with each other and how artists interact with museums. In 2016, standing where we are right now, we'd have to look up 200 feet above us, twice the height of that parking garage before we could see the top of the new SF MoMA. There will be over 160,000 square feet of space that's dedicated to experiences connected to art. That's more than triple just this area between Minna and Natoma that we're standing in. All of these places are designed with the most contemporary standards of lighting and environmental control, coupled together with a bold sense of sustainable planning to protect our environment, and this will be signaled by a 50-foot high, 150-foot long green wall that we be planted on the side of this parking garage adjacent to us. The museum will be, which was once introverted, will be open to passers-by. A delicate rippling facade of which you can see one of the mock-ups uh, against the building uh, to my right will highlight the originality of the museum's mission and new entrances will bring visitors not just from the main thoroughfares of Howard and Third Streets, but also from the smaller passages of Natoma and Minna connecting Yerba Buena Park to the newly transformed Transbay Terminal. This will be a complete urban transformation where SF MoMA continues to plant the seed for improving the quality of life in this city. The past will no longer be prologue. I'd like to close just by saying that architecture does not just support the functional aspects of our lives. In its best form, architecture helps us appreciate the sublime and the meaningful moments of our existence. We have been driven by the vision of so many here in San Francisco to make this happen, and we look forward to the next stage of our work together with you. A sincere thank you to Neil and Ruth and the board and the members of the planning committee that are here today and the city officials who have brought us all together to make this day possible. Thank you from the design and construction planning team. Thank you, Craig. 
So now what I'd like to do is invite a few additional members of SF MoMA's board and staff leadership team and some key community leaders and actually have the groundbreaking. So I'd like to begin with Brooks Walker and we're gonna all make our way down the, the, the uh, it's like Hollywood, down the red carpet. Brooks was, was the, I mentioned the groundbreaking uh, 20 years ago, 1993, and Brooks was our chair at that time and really led the effort to get us to Third Street. Bob Fisher, who's our SF MoMA board president. Ruth Burson, my, my partner in this project, our, our deputy director for curatorial affairs. Dennis Wong, trustee and chairman of the board's o construction oversight committee. Jane Kim, our district six supervisor who has been such a great supporter and partner in this project. And then I'd also like to introduce some very special neighbors who we aim to serve, in particular through the museum's enhanced education programs. A class of first graders from Bessie Carmichael Elementary School here in the neighborhood. member of the board since 2003 and board president for the last three years, I'm incredibly excited to be able to kick off this groundbreaking. On a personal note, I couldn't be more pleased that our family's art collection has found a home at SF MoMA. And I'd now like to introduce, thank you. I'd now like to introduce a partner who's been with us every step of the way in leading this transformation, District 6 Supervisor Jane Kim. Thank you, Bob. I just asked Craig um, if he was looking to forward to working on his next non-controversial project here in the city and county of San Francisco. <laughs> um, I always like to say this, but I, I do represent one of the oldest parts of the city, but in many ways it feels like the newest um, neighborhood and the newest kid on the block here in the city. But I think we take for granted uh, Yerba Buena and the neighborhood that exists now and what it was like over 20 years ago. And actually one of the first anchor tenants who helped transform what this part of the city is was San Francisco MoMA. And we are so grateful that you took that um, chance then to invest um, in this neighborhood and what you have helped with so many of our neighbor partners that are here today to transform it to what it is. So it is particularly um, it, important for us to be here today to celebrate the MoMA for what it is and what it will continue to be in the future. The last 10 years of my life prior to joining the Board of Supervisor, I was dedicated to youth development youth leadership, and of course, public education. So I am particularly warm that SF MoMA has made such an incredible announcement that it is gonna be opening its museums to those that are 18 and under for free. And having grown up in a different city that had so many cultural and arts institutions, uh, New York, um, I actually grew up going to museums as part of my life as a school child, and how important that cultural experience to, was to my development. Um, as we continue to cut arts in particular in our public school, this will be such an important part of their curriculum and their lives. So I'm excited um, that we can welcome another anchor tenant of the South of Market here as well, and that is our Bessie Carmichael K-8 through elementary and middle school that is here today. So I, I believe, is the principal here today, Lawrence? Okay, well we have the first grade class who will be representing the South of Market community. So, um, are you guys ready? Yeah. Are you ready for the countdown? Yeah. 
All right, so we're going to get our shovels, and, and then we are going to begin.